Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews, and this is the Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous. And here is her story. Hi, Ollie. I left a PayPal donation. I hope this helps with the channel being demonetized. Please keep me anonymous for this video. I can't emphasize enough how important your channel is for survivors to be able to tell their stories and to get clarity on the situation. Sometimes it takes an outsider's opinion to see what's going on in your life. You did a video for me a few weeks back about my new sister-in-law called You Can't Keep the Peace with the Histrionic Borderline. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were right on the money about her. <clears throat> Here's a brief recap of that video. My golden child brother is a 42-year-old man who still lives at home with my parents and recently married in September. Rather than move out or build a home or even have plans to build a home, he and his new bride are living upstairs in his bedroom and expect my mother to cook and clean for them and pay for their cable and internet as well as care for their dog that they treat like a child. <clears throat> I will call my new sister-in-law Karen in this email for clarity. It's not her real name. When Karen got engaged to my brother, she moved into my parents' house and quit her job and at the same time lost her license to drive from failure to appear in court. I saw some warning signs and red flags but tried to ignore them because I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. Now that they are married, I am seeing even more red flags that I didn't see before your video. She comes from a high-conflict family, and that conflict is starting to spill over into my family. She has been a perpetual, she's been in a perpetual bad mood since the wedding and never misses an opportunity to correct me if my opinion differs from hers. She's always mad about something or generally unfriendly when I'm around her. Sometimes when she is upset, she will suddenly run upstairs to her in my brother's room. I remember all this like a child like a histrionic child okay it's all about her <clears throat> it's all about the borderline it, it, it. the last time she did it i was showing a funny meme on my phone to my mother i'm an er nurse and helped karen get a job at my hospital as a nursing assistant because she needed a, a job to help pay for the wedding when i showed the meme to my mother karen huffed and ran upstairs did she ask to speak to the manager She's like, I want to speak to the manager. She huffed and ran upstairs. I remember thinking, now what have I done? I know she resents the fact that I helped her get a job at my hospital because she hated that job. She felt she was being bullied at work and was upset that the person supposedly bullying her got nominated for employee of the month. I would have nominated her too. Say, thank you for bullying that bitch. It also had... I, she also had disagreements with my manager over Karen performing unsafe practices with a psych patient. I think you said I think you said mentioned a lot of this in the in the last video I did. <clears throat> she quit that job and is now working in a medical office, so she should be happy, right? <laughs> the histrionic is never happy, ever, ever, ever. They just keep looking for the next thing to be offended. Okay, so they can have their histrionic fit and they can make everything about them. Okay, the histrionic is only happy being histrionic. That's what makes the histrionic happy, is the histrionics. She never misses an opportunity when I'm around to talk about how horrible her job as a nurse, nursing assistant was and how she loves her new job. She says it's better than my job as a nurse because she's allowed to eat food at the receptionist's desk and she doesn't have to work nights or holidays like me. I don't know why she keeps making this comparison of my job. There's this mentality where if you work like a nine, a typical nine to five, you've made it. And if you work any sort of off hours, you're some sort of loser. I, I mean, it comes, it, it's like a baby boomer type mentality, to be honest with you. I love my job as an ER nurse and I don't mind working nights or holidays because I get paid a lot more to work those hours, clearly. I have two kids to support as a single mother. I work as much as they let me. 
My best friend who has watched the situation unfold thinks Karen is jealous of me for some reason. She also thinks that Karen thought she was marrying into money when she married my brother, only to learn that my brother doesn't have a lot of money. He spent all he spent it all over the years <clears throat> being a bachelor, living at home with his parents, and having no bills except his truck payments and the closets full of cowboy hats and boots. Ugh. Ugh. My best friend thinks Karen feels as if she married down instead of up. Well, what's your first clue should have been moving into her fucking mom, her husband's mommy and daddy's house. Well, that wasn't her first fucking clue. Maybe you could shed some light on the situation as her family conflicts are starting to affect my family. And I think she's bringing her own family histrionics into my family. Of course she is. She's never going to stop. I tried to tell you this in the last video. It's all it's the only thing that makes her you think you're going to make her stop doing something that makes her happy. No. The histrionics, the episodes is what fuels her. She can't live without them. She's not she's not going to give up on that. <clears throat> I'll provide some information about the drama that has been going on since the wedding. It, it is like she suddenly changed her attitude towards me after the wedding. I know you stated in your video that you can't keep peace with the histrionic borderline, but I'm wondering if there's an element of jealousy as well, like my friend thinks. Probably. Yeah, probably. She's a histrionic. She's not mentally stable. She's she's not stable. She's got a personality disorder and a fucking one of the nastier ones at that. I know that Karen was raised to be high conflict and high drama, and I learned this when I met her family. I had very minimal contact with anyone in her family before the wedding. She has she has a complicated family tree that we learned about at the wedding rehearsal. Her adoptive mother, who is actually her grandmother, made a speech with too much information that made some of the guests uncomfortable. She was also... Oh, <clears throat> She was raised by her grandmother and legally adopted by her because her birth mother was supposedly 17 years old and in a physically abusive marriage. The story is that her birth mother asked her parents to take care of her baby girl until she could take care of her on her own. The grandmother slash mom then said that she wouldn't raise the baby if she had to give her back after a time she demanded she let her and her husband adopt her. Jesus Christ, the whole family is a train wreck, is a train wreck. You are, this family is so deep in the personality disorder, she's going to do nothing but destroy your whole family, nothing. And the fact that your brother was allowed to fester in that house at 42 years old, and from what I remember, isn't he like a lawyer or something? Doesn't he have like a really good job? I mean... I have to question what's going on in your family as well. I might be wrong on what he did, but for some reason, I think I remember him having a pretty decent job. <clears throat> the birth mother was at the rehearsal dinner the whole time she's giving this speech, and now technically her birth mother is legally her sister. My mother worked in family law for 40 plus years, and later that night when we were alone, she said something doesn't add up. In our state, marriages under the age of 18 are not valid, and secondly, in our state, the husband... I, I, I would almost guarantee you here that the grandfather is actually the father. There's something fucked up here. There's something that they're hiding. In our state, marriages under the age of 18 are not valid. And secondly, in our state, the husband in a marriage is automatically placed on the birth certificate as the father. She wouldn't have been able to legally adopt Karen without the husband giving up his parental rights unless the husband unless the husband is the same guy the grandmother was already fucking married to <sighs> <clears throat> 
and if the father and if your mother's father oh Jesus the father probably not I think the father might have knocked up his own daughter I mean that's that that's which could also explain Karen's mental condition. Both women were in the wedding as the mothers. In addition, this woman had a daughter who died of a drug overdose while working for a drug dealer. So she adopted Karen's nephew, who is now her little brother. The little brother has issues as well. Christmas last year, he placed a knife to his throat and threatened to kill himself if they didn't buy him a PlayStation. More histrionics. This is how they deal with each other. Now Karen's family is claiming my 15-year-old teenage daughter is a bad influence on this 11-year-old child. My daughter has no contact with this child, yet they claimed she called him a bastard at the wedding shower. I was at the shower, and my daughter was never around this kid. The shower was held at my parents' home at the height of COVID. My parents have health issues. My mother is 78 years old and a cancer patient with a very weak immune system, and my father had COPD. When the lockdown occurred in our state, Karen's family decided that they still wanted to have a wedding shower, but could not find a location that would allow it. Karen volunteered to use the Karen volunteered the use of my mother's house against her wishes. My mother went along with it because she didn't want to offend her or hurt my golden child brother's feelings. They invited 60 people to this party, which my mother was expected to provide tables, chairs, and decorations. At the party, my daughter stayed upstairs in the guest room with her best friend she had invited. They stayed upstairs the entire time playing video games. Maybe this kid was upset he wasn't included and made it up that she called him a bastard. And maybe your daughter actually did call him a bastard because he sounds like a little fucking bastard. Sometimes you got to call a little fucking piece of shit bastard a little piece of shit bastard. Especially one that's going to be histrionic, hold a knife to his throat, and be as demanding. And you had stories about this kid in your last video, too. Maybe the, the right answer is, well, maybe the little son of a bitch shouldn't be a little fucking bastard then. Because that's what he acts like. I'm sure your 11-year-old daughter didn't understand the, uh, or your 15-year-old daughter didn't necessarily understand the literal meaning of the word. My brother and Karen demanded my daughter apologize, but still say they love her. I thought, I hope the answer was, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. I didn't find out about this incident until recently when I found out there was another occurrence where Karen's mother yelled at my daughter. My parents had met her family months ago when they were first engaged and went out to dinner. I was at work and the kids were out to dinner with my parents. My daughter ordered a small steak and Karen's brother tried to order a steak and Karen's brother tried to order a steak. His grandmother mother told him he had to order a pork chop and apparently he was pouting the entire time she yelled at my daughter to stop being a bad influence stop letting your daughter around these people okay <clears throat> the first time they yelled at your daughter you should have been at this one of these people's throats don't you fucking ever talk about my kid again ever ever What were you afraid of? A hiss? What was she going to do? Go and cry? Cry some more? She does that every day anyway. Who gives a shit? Stop trying to avoid the histrionic episode. You can't. You can't. You should be trying to force those. Because, you know what? Let her cry. Let her fucking cry. Boo hoo hoo. You're going to cry. You're going to cry some more. This is how I told you you have to deal with these people. Is laugh right in their fucking faces. Laugh at them. Tell them they're crying. I don't see any tears. That's what you got to do. Because their happiness 
is their fucking histrionic episode. Their happiness is seeing you react to their histrionic episode trying to fucking please them. Don't do it. Ever. 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 Later, Karen's mother apologized in the parking lot. All of this information has come out in the past week. I told them that I think this kid is the bad influence and that my daughter will not be around him ever again. That's exactly how you handle that. Fuck that kid. Okay? Let me know when his parole hearing is. Let me know when he goes to Jew, because that's where that kid is ending up. Either that or with a needle in his arm. Karen and her family caused my mother a lot of stress during the wedding as well, rather than have the wedding in our hometown at our family's church where all our friends and relatives could attend. She and my brother opted to have the wedding at a resort six hours away. This was also during the height of COVID when a lot of hotels were closed. Because of this, they had very few people at the wedding other than close family. Most people could not afford to rent a house or cabins at, to the resort. Most of our family stayed in my parents' rental home in the resort. Two days, be two days before the wedding, <clears throat> two days before the wedding, Karen's family called and stated that they wanted to follow Karen and my brother and my parents up to the resort. My brother told them that they had to get out of the county, they had to get to the county office before it closed that Friday in order to pick up their wedding license. Otherwise, there would be no wedding that weekend without the license. They had to leave very early in the morning and were going to meet up at the halfway point. Karen's mother laughed on the phone when he said they had a definite time they had to get there to get their license. I think she was purposely trying to cause problems and drama. The kids and I went up a day early, or earlier to stay in a hotel with an indoor water park. I wanted to have some fun with the kids before the drama of the wedding weekend started. I got a call from my mother that morning in a panic because they were behind schedule. Karen and my brother had already started an hour late on the drive because neither one of them wanted to eat breakfast at home. They wanted to eat breakfast at a restaurant. Well, of course, this was during the lockdown, so very few restaurants were open and most fast food restaurants you had to go through the drive through They got to the restaurant and Karen realized she had not put gas in her car or gone to the ATM. <clears throat> she had gone, she and my brother drove off to go take care of their business before leaving town. Incidentally, she never puts gas in the car her, in her car herself. She has my brother pump her gas. After all that, they got to the halfway point on the trip where, where they were to meet her family, and of course, her family is not there. They called them to find out that they were also an hour behind. Once her family finally arrived, they insisted on getting a coffee from Starbucks. This is what history, they make it all about themselves. This is what they do to each other, to you. Don't involve yourself with them. Don't involve yourself. The entire crew from both her mother's sister, cousins, etc. went into Starbucks and sat down like they were going to take their time and finish their coffee. My mother called me from Starbucks in a panic, knowing they wouldn't make it to the county office in time to pick up the marriage license. She had barely slept a week before the wedding, worrying about the last minute details of the rehearsal dinner, as well as worrying if any of our relatives might be exposed to the virus during the wedding. Her brother also has cancer. He has survived pancreatic cancer and is now battling esophageal cancer. I called my brother and said, you need to leave her family with our parents and drive up to the county office on your own. They can follow our parents to the result. My brother replied that no, his future and mother-in-law wanted him to show them how to get to the resort. What a pussy. Your brother's just as big of a problem. Your brother's getting off on this as well. I answered him and said, they're adults, they can follow GPS like everyone else. I thought in the back of my mind that her mother was doing this on purpose to cause chaos and I was right because she continued to cause chaos at the wedding and the rehearsal dinner. I already covered 
in the other video how my sister-in-law ran upstairs the day before the wedding and did a fake cry and then demanded I apologize for causing drama. That was over the fact that the bridesmaids were confused about the rehearsal being at the rental home instead of the church. When I asked her about it, she ran upstairs saying, this is supposed to be the happiest day of my life and you just won't let things go. Since that episode, she has been cold and distant towards me or yells or snaps at me if I have a differing opinion. Stop being around this fucking bitch. Stop. I understand she's living in your fucking parents' house, but you gotta get, you gotta tell your parents she gotta go. You got to start getting in her face and in your brother's face. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. You got to. Because she's not going to stop. One of those opinions that got her upset was over her dog son. I call her dog son because she had this rescue shih tzu that is spoiled rotten. When she moved into my parents' home, she brought her dog with her. My parents never had any ins had inside animals, and my mother keeps the house immaculate. They would never had they they said they would never had an inside animal. Well, when she moved in, they allowed her to bring the dog because they thought the situation was temporary. She was going to find an apartment to move to. But then she quit her job because she was going to get fired for spending too much time in the bathroom when she was on her period. The dog throws up almost every day. She feeds him too much to start with, and I have suggested she feed, feed him a food for sensitive stomachs. I owned a dog for 14 years, and that is what the vet suggests. Stop wasting your breath on this girl. No matter what you tell her, it's going to be a problem. Stop it. Stop it. What's it going to take to make you understand the shit leopard doesn't change its fucking spots? That is going to be a burning hot stove every time you fucking touch it. Stop talking to her. Stop dealing with her. And only to for only to insult her or insult your brother to get her out of the fucking house. That should be your only dealings with this woman. And if anybody in the house, like your mother or father, try to stop you, then you got to walk away from the entire situation. My mother has to clean up after the dog when he throws up on the carpet because Karen works during the day at her new job. Karen snaps at me or yells if I make any suggestions about her dog. The dog drags its butt across the carpet demands to, and demands to go outside a dozen times a day. My mother can't go anywhere for very long and leave the dog at home by himself. Now Karen is stating she's going to get the dog a brother. Take the dog away. Give the dog away. She don't take care of it anyway. Take it to the pet. Take it to the pound. That's what I would tell her. You find a fucking place for the, any other animals come into this house. They're going to the vet. They're going to the fucking animal shelter. <clears throat> Go find a no-kill shelter. You don't have to kill it. Go find a no-kill shelter and bring it there. You have to start teaching, treating them like the children they are. Otherwise, this is going to continue. She's looking at adopting another Shih Tzu, but in a different color. They are treating this dog like their first child. Karen and my brother even had the dog in the wedding. The dog was brought down the aisle on a leash and was part of the official wedding party, bow tie included. This yappy little dog stays under your feet and has nearly tripped my mother several times. She is not steady on her feet being 78 years old and has balance problems from nerve damage to her ears. Get rid of the dog. Get rid of the fucking dog before it kills somebody. Get rid of the fucking dog. She has a cochlear implant but still can't hear very well, so the dog is able to sneak up on her and get under her feet. My brother and his wife don't seem to notice or care that the dog is causing my mother stress. 
in addition, I never realized how selfish my brother is until now. You mean 42 years living at home and you didn't figure this out? <clears throat> I learned from my mother last week that not only are they not paying rent to live upstairs, but they are not paying for the cable bill or internet bill. They expect my mother to cook dinner for them every night and expect my mother to haul heavy vac a heavy vacuum cleaner up the stairs to clean their room and bathroom that they use. When I asked my mother about this, she said she can't trust them to clean the bathroom because they are both slobs. She doesn't want her house to be messy. At least Karen and my brother could do is clean their living space. I'm thinking of giving them a vacuum clean. Are you, are you, give them nothing. Are you nuts? What is it? Like you don't learn? You don't want to learn, huh? You don't want to learn what I fucking told you. You can't change this woman. You can't guilt her into anything. You can't shame her. You might be able to shame her. Not by giving her things, by getting in her face and calling her the fucking lazy piece of manipulative shit she is. Her and your brother. That is the only thing. That is the only conversations you should be having with them. Fuck you, get out. Fuck you, get out. Fuck you and your dog. And you make it clear, this dog trips my mother. Your dog is done for. Done for. Done for. It will go to the pound. You have to start laying ultimatums down. You have to take control. Obviously, your brother doesn't take you very seriously. Because he's just laughing at you watching this, isn't he? You're going to buy them a vacuum cleaner. Fuck them. What are you, nuts? Instead of using a guest book for the wedding, Karen and my brother paid hundreds of dollars for a solid cedar bench engraved with their names for people to sign. It is so large that it doesn't fit in their room upstairs, so they left it in my mother's foyer. When she tried to get them to move it, they stated... No, they like it where it is. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Take it with you. Get rid of it. Fuck them. They don't want it. Your mother don't want it there. Get rid of it. Stop appeasing them. They're doing it because you're allowing them to do it. Get rid of it. It's shit. It's not their house. They don't pay any rent. They don't have any fucking rights to their shit there. Get rid of it. It ain't in their room. My daughter got mad and said, Grandma, this is your house, not theirs. My mom sighed and said, no, no, any, not anymore. I'm starting to think this is dangerous borderline. And I'm starting to think this dangerous borderline and my golden child brother are not looking for a house because they're waiting for my parents to die and then they will be theirs. Do you think? Do you think? How long before they get your mother to change the will if they haven't already? My parents celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary this month and Karen and my brother just couldn't leave them alone to let them go on a date. My parents were given a $100 gift certificate for a fancy restaurant in town. They made a reservation for themselves on Saturday night only to have Karen and my brother tag along. I called my mother and told her my brother and his wife are coming because they want you to pay for their dinner. I'm sure of it. She said she wouldn't let them do that, but it still made me mad that they are, on, they are mooching off my parents. Both my teenagers have seen this behavior. I guess that's what they prompted my daughter to tell me the other day when she turns 18. She is going to school or getting a job and moving out. She said, Mom, I'm not going to expect you to pay for my food and rent when I'm an adult like Aunt Karen and my uncle. I don't know what to do at this point. My parents are adults and they can take care of themselves. But at some point, I think I need to stand up for them. They are getting older and at some point they may develop memory issues. I hate seeing them taken advantage of, but at the same time, I don't want to have my contact I don't want to have any contact with my new sister-in-law if I can help it. It seems like no matter what I do, what I say or do, she has a problem with it. Like I said before, my best friend thinks Karen is jealous of me, but I don't know. She argues anything medical with me because she has two weeks of medical training to be a nurse's aide and acts like she has a medical degree. I'd be like, 
didn't you get fired because you couldn't stay out of the fucking bathroom? Like, this woman's got nothing but skeletons following her, and you're letting her just bully you around. When she quit her job and got hired at another job, she lied to her boy's boss and said she wants to be an ER nurse and wants to go back to school. She said later she just told them that so they would give her a favorable reference. Now when she argues medical things, I just shut up and don't say anything. I really don't want to argue. I think to myself, I neither have the time or crayons to explain things to you. Anyways, you were right on the money about her in the previous video. She is definitely a borderline, and she's gotten her hooks into my brother and my parents. I wish I could have seen this earlier, but I don't think my brother would have listened. Of course not, because your brother's just like her. Sorry, man. Your brother and her are exactly the same, and there's a reason why. There's a reason why your brother's been living there for 42 years and your mother does everything to appease him and you're there trying to trying to help her out and they don't really seem to be very thankful of it, do they? Do they? I don't think you want to accept the, the full situation for what it is, Anonymous. Thank you again for reading my story and giving me a chance to at least vent about the situation, Anonymous. The histrionic, the borderline histrionic it's happiness comes from being histrionic. The histrionic is happy being histrionic. What you are doing here is just, it's, it's just insane to me. Either you're going to stand up to this monster and stick to your guns and tell her to go fuck herself and call her the fucking ignorant moron she is and your brother the fat lazy sack of shit bully he is or this is just going to continue and continue. It's going to continue anyway. The real question is, are you going to be the fucking sucker? Are you going to be the putz sap that just takes it? That's on you at this point. Because I already told you they're not going to change. She's never going to change. She's happy being, being making everybody miserable. Are you going to accept it? The only thing you can do with the histrionic is call them out to their face and stick to your guns. That's it. Because it's never going to change otherwise. Ever. Because this is fuel to them. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for another contribution and story, Anonymous. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice. What is going on back there? Any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you as, as I am completely demonetized by Google and YouTube. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't and be, sh and, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads and be sure to follow me here and on Rumble as well. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.